Good evening, people. Welcome to 12 Kids Speed Dial with Mike and myself. Uh, giving you some topical stuff uh, 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 and rapid fire. Over to you, Mike. Evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Dave, you and I have discussions which we don't record and we throw around ideas and say, what's this going to happen? and How's that going to turn out, etc.? I'm going to choose a very simple idea. I've been thinking through a lot of different things that have to happen, in my opinion. And you've kindly granted me the space to put forward the idea and then ask for your reaction to it. And I'm hoping it'll be positive. I want to go back to the discussion we had with Dot Jessam, and that's my starting point. And quite often I'll ask someone, one of the guests, a question where I don't necessarily agree with what I'm saying. It's quite deliberately set up so that it draws the other person's opinion in something that they might disagree with. And what I was suggesting was with Dot Jessamine that I thought the Yes movement had to start leading a charge of some kind. And Dot disagreed with me and said, no, when it comes to politics, the SNP has to be at the point. I'm not totally convinced of that argument yet because we've got an inquiry going on which involves the high hegens of the SNP, involves all shades of opinion about what the hell happened and when the evidence is going to come out. We're also going to have a judge-led inquiry into whether Nicola Sturgeon did or did not mislead Parliament. All of that is a bit chaotic when you're looking forward to an election in May. And the one thing I do know is that the unionists are watching everything that's going on. And we're giving ourselves difficulties that we could well do without. I also refer to what we were talking with Dot about, about the formation of the newly elected NEC. Technically, we have four months before the 6th of May. And Dot was very well aware that that puts an awful lot of pressure on them because they've got all sorts of things to discuss. There's an article in the Herald today that Angus McLeod, before he departed, being the general secretary, had said, look, we maybe need to look at the way we've got the constitution running and the disciplinary procedures. And he's kind of, without putting the words into Stuart Stevenson's mouth, he's passed that on to Stuart Stevenson to consider. So does that become a priority for the NEC? My hope it doesn't, but it's something they've got to consider. So we end up in this situation where I see four months as being awful, awful short. So I've come up with one thing where I think the yes movement can take, I'm not suggesting it's the only thing the yes movement can, should consider. We should all be doing everything we can, but I want to make a suggestion of something which I think could play its part and play a very prominent part in something. And then ask for your reaction to it, my friend. Shoot me down or decide it's a good idea. It's up to you. First thing I want to tackle is we keep hearing that there's no way Boris can keep saying no. At the moment, I think there's every... If I had to choose someone, Boris is the person I would choose that would always say no. We're going into a period of chaos following Brexit. We'll be sinking French fishing boats. We'll not, we'll have lorries piled up to Carlisle. Now is not the time, is the perfect phrase for Boris to use. We've got to overcome that. Now, this is a platform I'm going to use for an idea. And I'm going to try and take it through, starting with the Yes movement and then moving up to the MSPs in the Scottish Parliament up to the MPs in the House of Commons. And it starts with something that was said in the House of Commons. That's a Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Dave, in the House of Commons, the mother of parliaments, quite clearly stating that a union ceases to exist when the people no longer give consent. I think the Yes movement, at every opportunity they can develop in this, should be stating, 
we no longer consent. This is not some throwaway comment in a newspaper article. This is not a quick comment on the marshal. This is the Attorney General Geoffrey Cox in the House of Commons stating that a sovereign state, that's Scotland, has the right to withdraw if a treaty is no longer compatible with its fundamental interests. Nothing could be clearer. Legal expert telling us the answer for Scotland. We know that the union is no longer compatible with the future of Scotland. We have to develop that. We know, Dave, that the phrase that irks us, and I can already hear people putting up posts when I use this phrase saying, Mike, that's wrong, but it's not true, it was out of context. Once in a generation. And we get that thrown in our face by unionists every single opportunity they get. And we've got to completely reverse that, in my opinion. We have the authority of a previous prime minister asking whether we can send we have the statement from an attorney general saying that we have every right to remove ourselves from a treaty. We've got to start using that. Now, it could be in social media, but I also suggest it could be in every letter into every local newspaper. It could be in letters to every national newspaper. If you're ever invited to phone call K on Radio Scotland, those phrases can be used every single opportunity we can find. But I want to develop it further. I want to think of our MSPs and our MPs. They're more likely to be on television programmes. They're more likely to be on discussion programmes. They're more likely to be asked to write a column for a newspaper. Think of it, Dave, that was the House of Commons. What would it have been like if it had been Angus McNeil Angus Brendan McNeil, who had stated that a sovereign state had a right to withdraw from a treaty. What would it have been like if it had been any of the Scottish MPs in Parliament who had said exactly what Theresa May said? Yes, the Scottish people no longer consent to this treaty being in existence. How powerful would that be? Here's my final thing. Ian Blackford gets two questions, and this is what I'm leading to. If the Yes movement can pick up this simple idea, his first question to Boris Johnson, and as far as I'm concerned, every single time there's a Prime Minister's question should be, Boris, a sovereign state has the right to withdraw if a treaty is no longer compatible with its fund fundamental interests. That was a statement made by an attorney general in this place, in the House of Commons, the mother of parliaments. Boris, do you agree with your attorney general or do you disagree? That's where I come from, David. It's a simple idea to use words, uh, words used by them and used against them. There's a last caption in this, Dave, which we'll put up just before the programme ends. It wasn't in the House of Commons. It's a very, very powerful word. And I think we've got to start using them. One simple idea of the many that the Yes movement will come up, that we can start now, before the inquiry finishes, before the judge speaks, before the NEC decide all the things they've got to decide on. The Yes movement can start mobilising and then see if we can get the MPs and MSPs behind us. That's me, my friend. Thank you for the time you've given me. Your reaction. Thanks very much, Mike. Uh, very interesting. I might come back to that at the end of what I want to talk about. Basically, we're now, uh, uh, by the time this goes out, about two weeks, two weeks uh, for Brexit, uh, uh, we're going to be leaving the European Union uh, if you remember how bad things were when everybody was complaining, oh, there's no toilet roll in the shops. Well, the the, the head of Tesco was doing an interview uh, a couple of mornings ago, and he said, well, 
there's going to be an increase in food prices between 15 and 50 percent uh, uh, for the first of January. That's assuming that we can actually get the food into the shops. That was his exact words. Assuming that we can get the food into the shops. So if you're worried about your toilet roll before, you might find out that there's going to be very, very few things there at all. Uh, uh, the chances are your big supermarkets will have some stuff because they've already got 10 mile tailbacks in Cali today because they're desperately trying to get as much stuff in as they can before this all bites. But today, there are 10 miles to, to tailbacks in Cali. Um, that's not counting what's going to happen uh, when they hit uh, this side of the channel by the time they have to go through customs and things like that. Um, if anybody ever wants to get into smuggling, now's the time to do it, because over the next couple of months, it's going to be a smuggler's paradise down that south coast. Um, but... Uh, that's 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 all in the post, and there's nothing we can do to avoid it. Because, as Mike says, with the best will in the world, Ian Blackford has stood up at first minister, sorry, prime minister's questions every week, and said Scotland will not allow themselves to be taken out of Europe against their will. Well, that worked. That really worked. That is what is known as rhetoric. It's not a solution. Rhetoric. Rhetoric doesn't work. It doesn't feed your kids when the shops are empty in January. Let me tell you a story. Last week, I went through all the rigmarole that you have to do so that my wife would be allowed to stay in this country. She's been here for 15 years. We've got kids that have been born here. She would have had to leave the country in another three weeks if we hadn't got this done. She's had to basically sign herself up as a second class citizen. Instead of having a little star of David on, she's going to have this little bit of digital paper that's got a little, a little European flag on it. But it's the same thing. She's going to be a second class citizen until Scotland votes for independence. Now, uh, that's something that had to happen. I've got two kids, uh, two kids here who were born abroad, one in Belgium and one in France. The one, the one that was born in France is allowed to uh, get British nationality. If I can find a translator, a proper French translator, to change something on his birth certificate, which he can't because of COVID. Do I register him before? I can't, he's stateless. Um, he's technically the same as a refugee. Uh, and yet, <laughs> he's been here all his life. With me. He just happened to be born in France. Uh, so this is all happening. So basically, Mr. Blackford, what, he, uh, what Mike's saying here is a really, really good idea. Why don't you actually use the question that Mike's just put up, and instead of rhetoric, let's start battering some first-class serves right back into Boris's court. Because if you're using their own words against them, maybe, just maybe, it's not as if we can turn around and say, oh, no, we don't believe in them. OK, you could say, well, that was Theresa May's government. I don't like Theresa May. Well, Theresa May doesn't like him very much either, um, as we've seen quite recently. And I still can't kind of work out who was the worst out of the two of them. But so, yes, I would say definitely I agree. Uh, so, Ian Blackford, uh, I'm going to cut this bit out, or the bit that Mike says. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to send it to you on Twitter. Uh, it's time you started using your time down in that place to, to start fighting for Scotland instead of like trying to tick boxes uh, so that you're going to get voted in the next election. There's not supposed to be a next Western election. There's not supposed to be one. We're supposed to be independent by then. Uh, we're only going to get dragged out of the EU, but we've been dragged out of the EU. What have you done about it? You got a, you got a few sound bites off before Boris walked out and left you to it. That's as much as I've got to say. Over to you, Mike. Just to finish, I'm suggesting it starts with the dot, Jessamine. Where did the Yes movement fit into gaining independence? That's one small idea I've got. Just a simple one. Start using their words against them the same way as they've tried to use words against us. We've got a bundle of MSPs. We've got a bundle of MPs. Let's see whether the Yes movement 
can start influencing them. We've done it before. You saw it with the marches, Dave. Initially, the marches were bereft of any political representation. Then slowly but surely, you saw them having to join in with the Yes movement. I hope that can be done. And this is just one simple idea to see whether that can be done. One more wee thing. Please tune in this weekend uh, because we're going to be talking to Alec Neal about the paper that he put out uh, last week with Alex Salmond, which looks very much like a manifesto for a new Scotland post-COVID. We're going to be talking to Alec. We're going to be recording on Friday night. We're going to put it out this weekend. I don't know exactly what time yet, but please tune in because it's going to be absolute dynamite. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone.